Kevin Durant is one of the NBA's greatest all-time scorers. Using his twiggy frame and seven-foot body to dominate the league for years, KD torches on and off the court. So did you smoke today? We're actually high right now. <laughs> uh, but now we have Victor Wembenyama, another twiggy alien guy who will torch the league for years. So why not put him in Kevin Durant's place and send him to the saddest city on earth, Seattle, Washington? Yeah, what? Where did the sun go? The sun isn't real in Seattle, Washington, buddy. But it ultimately didn't matter if the sun was real or not, because either way, Victor Wimbanyama was gonna take the league by storm and win Rookie of the Year. Victor! Rookie of the Year! And although Wimby couldn't get this team to the playoffs with a 41-41 and 41 record, he would rack up a ridiculous amount of points, putting him one spot ahead of Solomon Hill in all-time scoring and tying him with... Marty Conlon? Who the f*** is that guy? But bum-ass Marty Conlon was the least of Victor's concerns, as he would have to climb from 1,511th in all-time scoring all the way to number 10 in order to prove that he not only is as good as Kevin Durant, but that he's even better. And who knows, if he can beat KD, he just might look to go even further. Yes? Mr. Silver, I haven't seen the light of day in months. You gotta get me out of here. Hmm, you wanna see the sun, you say? Yes, please, that would be amazing. Hope you like Oklahoma City, you tall idiot! Yeah, Victor didn't know that Oklahoma City was a real place, but once he got there, he got comfortable really quick, as he would have phenomenal chemistry with Russell Westbrook, a young up-and-coming rookie. And while the chemistry was phenomenal, both of these guys were about 20 years old apiece. So even though they missed the playoffs this year, they were gonna start to figure things out pretty quickly. But let's not lose sight of Wemby's overarching goal to take down the other Slim Reaper, Kevin Durant. As in this season, he would score a little over 2,000 points, moving him up 500 spots in the all-time scoring list, meaning Wimby was well on his way to passing Kevin Durant, but in the 2010 season, his focus would shift, as he would seem to be prioritizing winning a championship, making All-NBA first team in just his third season, racking up yet another 2,000 points, breaking into the top 700 in all-time scoring. Oh, and I forgot to mention, they made the playoffs! And ironically enough, Victor Wimbanyama would be looking to beat the San Antonio Spurs in his first ever playoff matchup. And I know it's exciting, and the anticipation is probably killing you, but I do have to warn you first that even though I'm supposed to be unbiased in these videos, I kind of like Victor Wimbanyama. Oh, and if you were wondering... I got his jersey. Actually, I really like Victor Wimbanyama. So again, I'm gonna do my very best to be fair, but when Victor is using his twiggy, stick bug like body to dominate the Spurs, it's gonna be really hard to, as he would dominate this game on offense and on defense. And let's not forget about Russell Westbrook, as well as James Harden off the bench, two crucial pieces on this team, as these three guys would stun Tim Duncan in the San Antonio Spurs with a sweep, as Wimby would dap up the French legend Tony Parker and look on to the second round where he would face the Phoenix Suns. The Suns are the higher seed, probably the better team for now. I'm terrified, scared for my life. But Victor, on the other hand, was not scared for his life. He felt confident in the chemistry of this Oklahoma City Thunder team. But against the Phoenix Suns, this young Frenchman would be tested by a prime Amari Stoudemire, a big, physical, scrappy player who would just pop on his goggles and go to town. Putting the Phoenix Suns up 2-0, to zero. but don't count out this young Thunder core just yet because we have two more games to play in Oklahoma City. And I know you might be thinking that only eight people live in OKC, but that isn't the case because coming back the environment would be absolutely electric, as Wimby and Westbrook would absolutely assault the rim in games 3 and 4, tying this up at 2 apiece.
piece. And at this point, Wimby and the Thunder felt like they had this thing under control. But coming into Phoenix for game five, there would be a reality check named Amari Stoudemire, who would dominate the entire game. And with the Suns claiming a 3-2 lead, the dominance wouldn't stop theirs. They would go back to OKC, but the Suns' experience would prevail. And although Wimby would be eliminated in the second round, I still felt like he deserved some credit. Wimby's first playoff series, he took down the San Antonio Spurs. So like, you know, that's it. Come on. And let me also remind you that he's well on his way to passing Kevin Durant in all-time scoring. And in the 2011 season, that was going to continue to be a priority, but what was more important was bringing home a championship to Oklahoma City. As in this season, the Oklahoma City Thunder would be the one seed with a 64-18 and record, primarily because he's done it! The not only would Wimby be winning his first MVP, but he would also be breaking into the top 500 in all-time scoring, nearing almost 9,000 points in his career in just his fourth season. And Wimby would not be stopping there, because let me just reiterate this about the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're a one seed, they're the best team in the league, and the Thunder would look to prove they were the best team in the league, starting off with a rematch against the San Antonio Spurs. Decided to come back for more, huh, old man? I love the young people. And the results this year weren't much different from the results last year as the Thunder would wipe the floor with the Spurs in five games. Looking right on ahead to the Portland Trail Blazers in round two. Now last year, Mr. Wembenyama, he got to the second round, but that is where he lost. Is it gonna happen again? No, no. Did I just spit all over myself? Yes. And even though the Blazers somehow came out swinging and took the first game, Wimby and the Thunder would stop playing around and they would win the next four. And at this point, Harden, Wimby, and Westbrook had a certain swagger about them. They almost seemed unstoppable. But the only way to know if they were actually unstoppable would be in the Western Conference Finals where these guys would have to face Kobe Bryant. Let's get spicy. Get ready to tango. In opening this series up with home court advantage, Wimby was ready to tango to say the least, as he would be matched up against Pau Gasol, one of the league's best centers. But in these first two games in Oklahoma City, it didn't really seem like it as Wimby was controlling everything, stuffing the shit out of Pau in the post, and then on the offensive end, dumping all over him. As this Thunder team would take a commanding 2-0 lead, not terribly surprising, but what would be really surprising is when this series went to LA, you'd think Kobe might take control of things. But the complete opposite would end up happening, as this Lakers team would let go of Game 3, and then in Game 4, things seemed way too out of reach for him. And like I said, I'm not supposed to be biased, but I let it slip a little bit. Victor Wimbenyoma, Victor Wimbenyoma. But how could I not be excited? Because like I said before, in just his fourth season, Victor Wimbenyama would be making the NBA Finals. In the I was confident in him would be an understatement. The only thing standing between Victor Wembanyama and a championship are Derrick Rose and Carlos Boozer. I mean, bro, it's over. Like, I don't even want to... And at this point, the entire world was confident in Wimby and the Thunder. As starting things off in Oklahoma City, the first two games, there was no struggle. Carlos Boozer would get his bald head smacked around by 7'5", Victor Wembanyama. And at this point, somehow, Westbrook just seemed like a better version of Derrick Rose. And so with the Thunder up 2-0, I could smell victory in the air. Come on, bro, bring him in first. And so with the next two in Chicago and all momentum on the Thunder, side, Derrick Rose would say not so fast and come out of nowhere, winning games three and four for the Chicago Bulls. And this was absolutely shocking, but taking things back to Oklahoma City, you'd be stupid if you didn't think the Thunder would get this one done. And going back to Chicago with the opportunity to force a game seven, Derrick Rose would do exactly that, as the Bulls would pull away in the fourth quarter. Okay, the Bulls are running away with it. Oh, Oh my god, game seven? But as I mentioned before, Wimpy and the Thunder were the ones with home court advantage. This game seven was in Oklahoma City, meaning that all signs would point to the Thunder winning an NBA championship. So as you'd expect, things would get underway, and then by the third quarter, the Bulls had put this thing out of reach, and Derrick Rose would be the one ripping the championship away from
from Victor Wembenyama. The thunder choked! This is the worst day of my life. And so despite smoking Tim Duncan and Kobe Bryant, two NBA legends, Derrick Rose would be the one to take away the championship from the thunder. And Victor of course was upset. He not only wanted to beat KD's all-time scoring record, but he also wanted to do what Durant never did and bring a championship home to Oklahoma City. But guys, as I mentioned, that was just his fourth season. Do you really think that in the 2012 season, Victor Wembenyama would not win another MVP? As well as leading this Thunder team to now a 65 win season? Oh, and also, he would now be breaking into the 10,000 point territory on the all-time scoring list. Meaning that sooner or later, he would be halfway to Kevin Durant's all-time scoring total. And as you'd probably expect, KD was a little salty about that. Wembenyama has now reached 10,000 points in his career. He's not that good. But KD wouldn't be able to live in denial for long, as in round one, Wimby and this Thunder team would smack the Golden State Warriors. Then in round two, you guessed it, smack. Then in the Western Conference Finals against the Grizzlies, they got a couple games, but still smack. Meaning that the Oklahoma City Thunder were winding right back up in the NBA Finals. It appears Jeremy Lin is still on his Lin sanity run, and Carmelo, well, he's Carmelo Anthony. And while Jeremy Lin sold his soul to be good for a fraction of an NBA season, that would not last for long. Because keep in mind, this is Victor Wimbanyama's second finals appearance. He has not forgotten about what happened last year against the Bulls. So as game one got underway, you bet that when Jeremy Lin came into the paint, Wimby was sending that sh** into the nosebleeds. But even though Jeremy Lin got shut down, Carmelo Anthony was of course still a factor. As the Knicks would somehow take the first game in Oklahoma City. But to no surprise, the Thunder would bounce right back and tie the series, and then they would even go to New York and take the third, setting us up for a crucial game four where the Knicks would tie things up. So yes, returning to Oklahoma City, we were tied at two apiece. But Victor Wimbanyama was not about to go out with a loss in the finals in back-to-back -back seasons, trust me. So he would do what any all-time great would do and take over game five. And did you really think going to Madison Square Garden he was gonna fold? No! He would go into MSG and have a monster game, winning his first NBA championship. And I was a little excited about it. He's done it! So while the Thunder could celebrate now on what they had accomplished, in the offseason, things might get a little rocky with James Harden. Well, Victor, we finally did it. Yeah, James, we did. And I assume you're gonna be with us to get a few more, huh? You know I'm loyal to Oklahoma City. I would never let- Ooh, did I just get a DM from Kendall Jenner? And all it took was one DM from an Instagram model, and now James Harden's massive ego was inflated. So much so that he was gonna go to the Houston Rockets in hopes to win a championship by himself. But who knows, maybe one day Wimby and Harden will link up again in the Instagram model capital of the world, Brooklyn, New York. But we've got other matters to attend to, because in the 2013 season, Wimby Wimby and Westbrook's goal was clear, to win another championship and prove that they don't need James Harden. And with Wimby getting, you guessed it, a third MVP, he would look to do just that. And per usual, he was right on pace to breaking KD's all-time scoring record, taking over Kawhi Leonard's spot in the all-time scoring list. But in round one of the playoffs against the Portland Trailblazers, things would get rocky really quickly, as this series somehow would go to seven games. Games, but don't you worry, because Russell Westbrook would be the one taking the crucial shot. Like, why are you burning cl You could literally have a two for one! What are you doing? So with the Thunder exiting in the first round, it would seem like they would miss James Harden's excessive dribbling. And while Westbrook would become West Brick for a split second, that would not last for long. As not only would Westbrook look to turn things around in the 2014 season, but so would Wimby. As both of these guys had one goal in mind, and that was to win a championship, smashing their way through rounds one and two, and then in the Western Conference Finals, they would 
get the dub against the Lob City Clippers. And just to show you how locked in Wimby was, he didn't even stay to celebrate the conference championship because he was moving right on to the NBA Finals to play King James in the Miami Heat. Wimby's already got one championship. He's made his presence felt in this league. Now he's got to play the king. <laughs> but quickly, it would seem like the king might be passing his crown off soon to Victor Wembenyama, as the 7-4 freak from France would absolutely take over the series, putting poor Bashasaurus Rex on a poster regularly, meaning that in just five games, Victor Wembenyama and Russell Westbrook were now two-time NBA champions, and as if taking down one of the greatest, if not the greatest players of all time wasn't exciting enough, the dominance would not stop there because Wimby knew he wasn't going to be in an Oklahoma City uniform forever, so he figured why not run it up in the meantime, as in the 2015 season, this team would have a 68 win season, and I don't even need to cover the first three rounds of the playoffs, you know they blew through them, getting right back to the NBA finals and facing a similar face except on a different team, but let's be real, LeBron and Tristan Thompson aren't stopping these guys, no Nobody is, and so they would easily run it back, taking a 4-2 series win and claiming their third championship. So yes, that's three championships for Victor Wembenyama, but in the 2016 season, we were going to see these guys right back in the same position, as they would dominate the Western Conference. Nobody really had an answer for them. And sure, they'd face LeBron again, but man, Victor Wembenyama had him figured out, meaning that yes, the Oklahoma City Thunder were three-peating on top of LBJ and the Cavaliers. So yeah, all these championships are great and everything, but remember why we're here. We're tracking the all-time scoring list. And let me just tell you, during these three championships, while Kevin Durant watched at home from his couch, Wimby contributed a ton in the regular season, scoring nearly 8,000 points across these three seasons, meaning he would be going from 215th all-time all all the way to top 50, where he would take over the 43rd spot. So still, Wimby is well on his way to beating Kevin Durant's all-time scoring record. But let's also acknowledge the fact that he got four championships for the Oklahoma City Thunder, meaning that him going to another team was far more acceptable. They were happy for him. But the team that would be making their offer, the Golden State Warriors, hadn't had any real success in this period. So you could say Steph Curry was a little desperate. Please, this is all I have! Dude, just relax, I'm coming. And just like that, Victor Wimbanyama would be heading out west to the Golden State Warriors, as having Steph Curry as the primary ball handler would allow him to work the post more and focus more on defense, as Wimby would put up monster numbers in his first season with the dubs, as well as winning Defensive Player of the Year. And in terms of the playoffs, you have the greatest shooter of all time alongside with debatable the best player of all time. So you know, nobody really stood a chance until the Western Conference Finals. Coincidentally, facing his former teammate who looked a lot like a Ninja Turtle, Russell Westbrook, in the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, as I mentioned previously, Wimby left Oklahoma City on good terms, and especially on good terms with Russell Westbrook. But in the Western Conference Finals, the Thunder would be pulling the upset somehow. And with the Thunder pulling the upset, it didn't seem like Westbrook liked Wimby that much. Hey, man. F*** you. What do you say f*** me for? So with Victor and the Dubs exiting in the Western Conference Finals, we would actually see in the 2018 season again if these dudes hated each other. Because once more, they would be linking up in the Western Conference Finals. And in my head, there was only one logical explanation for this. Clearly, Westbrook misses uh, the warmth of Wimby. Hey, yo, what the f***? The only difference in this Western Conference Finals finals was now, this was personal for Victor Wembenyama. Oh, and also, Westbrook was now running with Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, so you could say Wemby was shitting his pants. And to be honest, the pants shitting would continue through game one in Oklahoma City, but in game two, Wemby would say, hold on now, let's take back home court advantage. And then going back to the Bay, Wemby and the Dubs would get the third game, going up 2-1. But of course, they wouldn't be out of the woods yet as Carmelo Anthony would take over in game four and the Thunder 
Thunder would tie things up at two apiece. And the Thunder trio would take the series back to OKC, and they would even take a 3-2 lead. But come on now, you know with another championship on the line, Victor Wembanyama was of course gonna force a Game 7. And this Game 7 was in a hostile Oklahoma City Thunder environment. But this environment was all too familiar to Victor. He had won championships here before, and so this worked in his favor. As down the stretch, the Warriors were pulling away, and it was clear who the conference champions would be. Golden State's running away with it. Wemby's running away with it. And of course, Victor was ecstatic to get revenge on the Thunder and beat his former team. But Victor's joy would not end there, as he would move on to the finals to face LeBron. And you can't help but feel bad for LBJ, because he just can't seem to beat Mr. Wembenyama. As this final series would be over in a clean sweep, Wemby would be claiming his fifth championship. He's the GOAT! And it's clear that the Warriors are hitting their stride around Wimby now. So I'll make the 2019 season quick. Wimby would of course be winning another MVP. <laughs> And as for the playoffs, everything would unfold nearly the same as it did in real life, where the Warriors would face the Raptors in the finals. Except Victor Wimbanyama would be fortunate enough to not face an injury, and he would deliver an ass blasting to Kawhi Leonard and the Toronto Raptors like no other. Meaning that, yes, he would be tying Michael Jordan with six championships. And while that's super important, don't think for a second that I forgot about the all-time scoring list. As in Victor's three seasons with the Warriors, he'd be moving all the way up to number 11, right at the doorstep of Kevin Durant. And in order to pass Kevin Durant, Wimby would be making his move to the Eastern Conference where he would play for the Brooklyn Nets, linking up with one of the best point guards in the league, Kyrie Irving, who would try to convince him that the Earth was flat, but ultimately Wimby wasn't too worried about the shape of Earth, he was worried about passing KD and all-time scoring. And after leading the Brooklyn Nets to a 3 seed with a 55-27 and 27 record, he would do just that, moving on up to 29,506 points, placing him at number 8 in all-time scoring ahead of both Shaquille O'Neal and Carmelo Anthony. And because now he was indisputably better than KD, you could say the Durantula was a little upset. No. But remember what I said previously, if he was gonna pass KD, he would have to look even higher. He was gonna go for LeBron. But in order to beat the greatest all-time scorer, you're gonna have to be on a better team than the Nets. As for the three and a half seasons he was there, this team was an absolute disaster. They would make the finals in 2020 and go to a game seven against the Houston Rockets. But in the end, Victor would come up short to both of his former teammates. And so for the 2020 one season, Wemby would be reuniting with James Harden, as I mentioned previously, but since he just beat Wemby in the finals, if you thought Harden's ego was already big, it was as big as it's ever been. Meaning, he didn't really care about these games. He would only play well if there were baddies sitting courtside, and they would exit in the second round of the 2021 playoffs. And in the next season, yep, you guessed it, the same thing would basically happen, except this time James Harden requested a trade. So Wimby said, there's no way I'm doing this, and he would sit the remainder of the year. But in 2023, Wimby would make it halfway through the season in Brooklyn, and then he would request a trade to Phoenix. A move that made Victor feel confident that he would have the best shot at passing King James's all-time scoring record. And in addition to that, after being traded mid-season, he would still wind up winning an MVP, as well as riding with the Suns to first place in the Western Conference. And and Wimby and his new partner in crime, Devin Booker, would dominate these playoffs, demolishing teams in round one and two, and then blowing through the Western Conference Finals, where they would look to play Jason Tatum, who's just 19 years old, and the Boston Celtics. But when you look at the Celtics roster, they don't really have anybody who can guard Wimby, so this thing would be over with a sweep. 
Meaning that, yes, Wimbenyama would be claiming his seventh championship. So pretty much everyone agreed at this point that he was the greatest player to ever live, except Skip Bayless. Coming up next on Undisputed, Wimby's got his seventh. Is he the greatest? No, 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 no! Skip! We just started! Relax! So after the most insecure man in sports broadcasting history threw his tantrum, Victor Wimbenyama only had one primary objective, and that was to become the NBA's leading all-time scorer. And ever since passing Kevin Durant, he was now at 35,978 points, and he was fourth on the all-time scoring list. So with just one more season to go for Wimbenyama, he would leave it all on the floor, going out and scoring nearly 2,000 points. And while for the average player, this is a really good amount of scoring, he would have had to score like 4,000 points to pass LeBron. So while he would come up short of King James and Kareem, he would pass up Predator Carl Malone. But there's a key bit of information missing from this whole thing. Wimby's probably got a few more years to go. But since I can't predict the future and how the NBA is going to look for the next few years, I'm just going to ask you, what do you think? Do you think if Victor kept going, he would eventually become the all-time leading scorer? Regardless, indisputably, he was the greatest player of all time at this point, claiming seven championships. But in real life, people regard LeBron and Michael Jordan as the two greatest players of all time. So what would happen if Michael Jordan was put into LeBron's situations over the years? Would he still claim six championships and be regarded as the best player of all time? Or would he throw away his entire NBA salary at a trashy Cleveland casino? Well, I got good news for you. There's a way to find out, and that's gonna be by clicking on the center of the screen. 